Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. The face of trillions of dollars getting thrown at the system. So uh, we're gonna really unpack this today and dive into it and I know uh, he's ready. Uh, he's in Amsterdam right now and we're looking forward to uh, a great discussion. Charles, thanks for coming on the show with me today. You're welcome. In this current environment, uh, why do you feel investors are so bullish on the stock market? Based on what? According to me, based on nothing, uh, but we have seen it before. We have seen it after the crash of 1929. The market made a huge recovery before then, you know, going down and down and down. We had it in 73, 74. It happened in 2007, 2009. Uh, after the 2000 crash. So it's actually a normal behavior because of the slogan, buy low and sell high. Now, nobody really knows what is high and what is low, but it's compared to where it was, then it's low. And most people have not the insight to understand why they buy stocks. So right now, like I was in, 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 in the dot-com bubble, there's no connection with the earnings at all. Uh, the earnings are going down and down and down, and the market goes up. Uh, and it's not going to end well for everybody. Yeah. So in March, we had a record amount of people Googling COVID-19, coronavirus. And these searches almost perfectly or perfectly actually correlated to the bottoming out of the stock market. So talking about, you know, the Dow Jones going to 5,000, what's going to be the trigger? And is it going to be correlated to some sort of event that panics uh, the heart of investors? Well, for people who follow my research, <clears throat> we were in zero stocks one or two months before the market crashed. I had no idea why it crashed, but my indicators looked very bad for the economy, for the S&P earnings. And I don't think it has so much to do with the virus. It sounds strange because everybody becomes an expert in virus. But I says, you know, we have to go to zero stock because this market is going to come down big. So it came down almost 40% before it bounces. So we still have a big problem in the economy. And that nobody watches because everybody thinks when we solve the, the virus situation, that's it. Everything is solved. It's not. We still have an economy that it was weak before the virus. The interest rates were low. Deflation was coming up, and it was it was a big mess. And all the insiders were selling. Um, so one should not concentrate all the time on the virus. Now the second thing is, if you look at how this virus develops and the other stories, starting with the Spanish flu, you're going to have a first wave. You're going to have a second wave. You're going to have a third wave. So my cycles actually uh, show what the interpretation of the facts are. And the interpretation of the facts were that the virus is very bad. And then when the cycle bottomed, the interpretation is, well, we're going to find something that's going to get us out of the mess. And what you see happens in, 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 the, in the, the North America, the US, South, South America, it's getting worse. Now, I heard Melbourne is on a lockdown, but the interpretation is still, oh, it's not so bad. So once the cycles turn over, which which are doing now then the interpretation is well maybe we're not going to find the vaccination and it's going to be a big problem so we got out around 3100 on the s p totally again after the bounce and we're just sitting on cash again uh because it's too risky right now based on the cycles right so we have millennials diving into the markets in record droves 
things like Robinhood are really making it very easy. Record participation in the stock market. You know, and if the market goes to 5,000, there's gonna be a, a, a world of hurt for these new entrants into the market. So what, what do you make of that? And how is that going to fare for these people who are just getting into the market for the first time and, and having this explosive experience? Well, let's, first of all, let's not forget the bond market is much bigger than the stock market. And soon rates are going up. So people who bought bonds and they get one and a half percent or they're still buying bonds because there was a bull market for 35 years, they don't even realize markets can go down. That is going to be more destruction of capital than the stock market because they won't come back anymore. And if some inflation picks up, you're going to be negative on your rate of return. So that is more worrisome even than the stock market. Um, for the rest, what can I tell you? I, I tell them in the 1990s that that was 5,000. The world looked okay. It's not that the world is going under. Um, it will be a normal behavior. Now, I have been saying that for the last couple of years, based on my system, it looks strange. Now, maybe we have an, uh, an idea because of the virus why we could go to 5,000. Uh, could be a war. Could be anything happening. Could be that Biden wins and he, he overrules everything that Trump did. And the market doesn't like it because I, I don't see people taking consideration that Trump might, might lose, which I think is very negative for the market. Um, and then we have the situation which I talked about based on my cycles of, of sociology, that there's a 60 years social unrest cycle. And uh, there was a 60s and now 60s is later. The whole thing starts again and people don't know how to fast it can destroy the United States. So, uh, Charles, you mentioned going to 5,000. We saw that in the 90s. But is it, is it equal and opposite? I mean, can the world sustain a 5,000-point Dow Jones? I mean, aren't we a lot more dependent on higher valuations? And, and what will that look like in the economy if, if all of a sudden valuations get decimated? You know, does that trickle through to of bankruptcies and, and so many things that need to get flushed out based on very high valuation. I mean, you talked about the, the bond market. I mean, what's this going to do to retirement if we have 5,000 points on the Dow Jones and, you know, record or tons of people retiring and uh, this plan on, on the future valuation. So anyways, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I can talk a lot about Europe because retirement here is already in a difficult situation because according to law, the pension funds here have to be like 70% into in bonds. And the bonds here, European bonds, give you like 0%. So you can count very simple that there's no gonna, not going to be a buyer power. There's not going to be consumers in a couple of years because they cannot pay the pensions anymore. That's only based on the 0% interest rates and not even talking about the stock market going down. So already here, we talk about people not getting their pensions or getting half of their pensions. Uh, it's, it's a big problem everywhere. And that's the result of what the Fed did, lowering rates. You know, there is what I call a super cycle that started like in, in, in 1870 after the Berlin crash. And it did more after the 1929 crash. And the Fed and has decided then that we don't want any depression. We keep things going. So they keep things going and going and going until they have now zero interest rates and nobody knows what to do anymore. It wouldn't be better if they would just have let things develop like they had developed. So we had some crises that were manageable in the last hundred years, but they didn't want it. So now something that's not going to be manageable. Yeah. So any instinct on what you expect to happen in tech stocks? I mean, we really saw tech stocks benefit in this COVID crisis. They got bigger as a percentage of the overall equity market. And, uh, you know, going, seeing this massive crash that we're expecting here, uh, the 5,000 point call here, what do you suspect will happen in tech stocks? Is it, are they going to still fare better than uh, most other ones, or do you expect a, a larger amount of air to be released 
out of the bubble that's been forming in the tech stocks, if you believe they're to be in a bubble? Well, first of all, we talk about four or five stocks. It does the same thing as Tesla. I mean, these days people buy these stocks and buy Tesla because tomorrow is going to be higher. I don't think anybody has an underpinning why Tesla should go up. It's, I think it's up 40, 50 percent in the last three days. Uh, I tell you honestly, the work I do is mostly on indices. When does the market go up? How high does it go up? When does it go down? And I don't think I'm, I'm clever enough to find those stocks that would still be okay when the whole market crashes down. So I don't, I don't try to be that, that smart. Charles, I appreciate that, uh, the transparency, right? Uh, where do you suppose the flight to safety is going to be when we're in this crash? Well, we've been long in gold since 2011. Uh, now it's a bit late. I'm looking for, uh, for a correction. We're now today, we're at 1810. I think we started at 1400, 1450. Um, long-term investors can stay in because the cycle is up for the next couple of years. Uh, but people who are getting afraid, and additional dimension, what usually happens is that people say, well, I'm in there for the long run. But then it goes down $100, okay, $150, I'm for the long run. But once it goes down $200, they sell and the emotional hurt. And then when I say, let's buy, they don't get to the, the, the bounce again. So it's difficult to be for the, long, for the long run. So what we do is we have the cycles and we have the price target. So we can tell exactly how high the, the gold price will go, how low it will go. We do it on interest rates. We do it on currencies. For instance, now we're looking for a better euro currency. So the all kinds of ways investing, uh, we do the crude oil, uh, it does have to be in, in, in stocks. If you have a wider horizon and you look a little bit what we do and you read some books, then you can make a nice rate of return even if you're not in stocks. What does the world, uh, not the world, the stock market look like after we see 5,000 points? Is it this uh, long, uh, uh, unsustained, you know, this long recovery uh, back to where we're at? Uh, do we V-shape back or do we uh, flatline for a while? What does your research say on that? Well, if you do an overlay, what happened in Japan that topped, uh, I don't remember, I think over 40,000 in the 80s, it came down and since then it doesn't do, it doesn't do much. I think what's going to happen is we're going to bottom and then for a, a, a couple of years, would we'll just go sideways uh, until you know things are fixed, and then maybe we start a new rally. I and just want to mention. I just want to mention how overbought this market is because if people open an account these days, the broker says, "You know what? Let's be in stock because they go up seven, eight percent a year." You probably heard that. Now that's based on the fact that if you go if you go from the 1900s and you draw a line with an angle of seven, eight percent. It goes up seven, eight percent. The problem is right now is that you're forty-five percent above the 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 eight percent. So in order to get back to the eight percent average of the last hundred years, you have to go down fifty percent below it. Mm. So people have no understanding what is expensive, what not expensive. So on a macro level, Charles, what do you suppose is going to happen to capital? I mean, is the U.S. still going to be where the capital flows? Uh, as we go into this crash, or is there going to be a shifting of wealth globally that is pivotal, you know, really changes uh, where and how the world is structured economically? Well, in the, in the, in the uh, early 1900s, there was the uh, genius Kondrachev in Russia. They killed him because he said capitalism is going to conquer communism. And we have the Kondrachev cycle, and he showed that every so many years, it is very long term, a new continent takes over. And I wrote a couple of years, Europe is ready down. Uh, the East, Singapore, India, China, Taiwan, Australia is going to be the leading one. And the United States is going down. Uh, and it, that's why it's so interesting to see how it really happens and why there's so much in a hurry to destroy that country. So you see it happen in front of your eyes, how they're going to destroy the country. Uh, I, I told people to, to, uh, to order the book, uh, maybe you noted know, by George Orwell, 1984. 
and he writes about the thought police. There's a thought police that tells you how to think. And he says, well, when you think words, it has to do with emotions. So if you don't allow people to speak those words, they don't feel the emotions anymore. And then the second thing he, he, he says, and it's very interesting, is that in that situation, they destroy history because then nobody can compare what actually is the truth and what not the truth. So you only listen to your leaders, what they say is correct. So I have no opinion of what, who is right and who is wrong in the United States, but you see exactly what he wrote. They're destroying the history and you're not allowed to think in a certain way. So we're going down very fast. Yeah. And it's a very sad thing uh, when you see it that way, when, you, when we're not on this upward trajectory. The only thing that is a saving grace is technology seems to be on this hyperbolic uh, trend. I mean, the more technology we have, the more efficient things can be and the more we can efficiently contain the standard of living that uh, otherwise costed the, the country much more, 10 and 20 and 30 years ago. Um, so I guess that's the only saving grace is, is hopefully technology catches up to the mess that the world is dealing with. Well, Plato, you know, Plato and uh, was, uh, was a pupil of so Socrates. He already wrote, the problem is that the innovation doesn't keep track with the moral wisdom of the population. And that's the problem. Also here, it doesn't, you know, it goes too fast for developing the moral wisdom of the population. So it's only gonna to lead to trouble. It's interesting, you see what happened to this internet. Slowly, slowly, we see all the negative influences of the internet. Uh, I hear, again, I'm not an expert in all these stories about Facebook. Uh, now Facebook has to uh, censor what they can show and what they cannot show. So that starts to be very interesting. Television is gonna to, going to tell you what you can, can hear and see. Facebook's going to have to tell you what you can hear and see. If not, the advertisements are going to stop. There's a very negative point in all these developments. Yeah. And it's just interesting to see how quickly uh, we've become a state-run uh, big government, this 1984 world, uh, in a blink of an eye. I mean, we're, you, know, you can't even walk outside now without uh, wearing a mask and people... Uh, maybe ratting you out or, or backstabbing you or monitoring you. I mean, this is not the free country. It was such a, an odd dynamic celebrating the 4th of July this year in a world that just did not feel free, uh, dealing with extreme ec economic problems, uh, social divides uh, of races, and then obviously this health crisis that's going on. Uh, it's just uh, it, it's just a twilight zone. And so uh, maybe some thoughts on that, Charles, as we uh, kind of wrap up this interview here. Well, it's not my expertise, but in the old days, if somebody would misbehave against you, you would tell your brother, your mother, you know, four or five people. Now you put it on Facebook. You got five, six people that say it happened to me also. They make a lot of noise. You don't know how big that group is and they influence the whole society i don't know what how that's going to end nobody really knows about all groups that that have their voice out there how big they are but everybody seems to be very much appeasing everybody and sitting in amsterdam i'm just at awe how this will continue united states so that was my answer to what's going to the united states going to be i don't see the future of a country like that where you cannot say and think anymore What's true and what's not true? You have to be politically correct. Then you think politically correct. Then you feel politically correct. I see it all in my cycles. Uh, I see what happens. If you want, if you understand more about it, go to uh, charlesnenner.com. You have a free subscription. And then you have a little more insight how you can approach markets and all these problems in the world. 